So today, uh, our webinar is dedicated to how to start a social startup. And Sergei Panamarev will be guiding you through this topic today. Hello, I'd like everyone. To... Yes, he there. <laughs> From Russia, I guess. <laughs> yes, you're right, Svetlana, absolutely. <laughs> Great. So, um, he will be guiding you through this topic and uh, we suggest you write your questions in the chat and afterwards after 30 or 40 minutes depending on how it flows we will have a q a session on uh, the topic and of course as the last time as well we will provide you all the slides uh, after the webinar so you can concentrate on the content right now and no no need to make pictures or whatever um, please, please use the chat and uh, yes, as I said, I'm really happy to be on this webinar and to help a little bit to facilitate and to answer your questions afterwards. Sergey, I give you mm -hmm. the word. Yeah, thank you Svetlana. Um, okay, so let's start our webinar. Uh, let me shortly introduce myself. Uh, my name is Sergey. I am CEO and co-founder of International Impact Investment Center Galileo. Uh, I'm a certified expert in the field of uh, social entrepreneurship and have uh, 19 years experience in public sector. I've worked in a lot of non-commercial organizations and realized more than 100 social projects different from local to international level and carry out about 500 seminars in most of uh, regions of Russia uh, for NGOs, leaders, for business, for authorities, uh, for different um, people. Uh, I am PhD in political science and have 14 years of academic background, worked in uh, Penn State University. Um, you can find me in uh, LinkedIn. I'm always open for new contacts, so that's what I am. As for agenda of our webinar, uh, so uh, at first I want to talk with you about how to find an idea for social startup, how great idea uh, differs from bad or failed idea, uh, how, to, um, how to transform your idea into goals, goals into plan, and how to realize it, how to implement it. Uh, of course, we need to talk about why 99% of startups uh, fail and how to avoid it. There are thousands of reasons, uh, but I try to mention the most important from my point of view. So the first part, it can be a little bit more theoretical. Um, and in the second, I'll try to show you the most uh, interesting and awesome examples of social ventures from different parts of the world. Uh, it's just my personal experience um, with whom I was lucky to, to, to meet from United States, from England, Europe, uh, Russia, of course, and uh, East. And in the end, I'll be um, happy to answer your questions. This is our plan, our agenda. Uh, small clarifying questions, you can also just uh, uh, type in, in our chat. Okay, let's start with uh, definition uh, by social startups. Uh, I mean growing companies uh, with social or environmental goals. So it's uh, just the same as uh, growing social venture. It's not entirely true, of course there are differences, but I think that for our talk it uh, will be okay. And uh, here I tried um, to collect uh, main reasons why you can need a social startup or what it can give it to you. So the first thing uh, I consider that uh, social, uh, to run your social startup, it's the best self-test. So you can immediately reveal, uh, understand who you are and uh, understand uh, how much you cost because uh, startup usually it's not about it's mostly not about following your dream but overcoming your internal fears and it's absolutely wonderful uh, self-test uh, the second reason is focus 
startup will teach you how to focus it will give you energy and uh, you will have to learn and work 10, 10 times faster than you usually do uh, also if you have some problems uh, or difficulties with communications and networking also startup will teach you how to overcome all these difficulties because you have to uh, understand and know the needs of your um, uh, customers and the needs of people and communicate with them a lot uh, self-respect yes also um, uh, startup will teach you how to overcome circumstances and get what you really want um, money of course also important uh, it's absolutely necessary a resource if you want to change the world maybe not as a goal but as a uh, mean or as a resource for uh, other other interesting opportunities and the last thing uh, no limits uh, because most of the hired positions uh, oh there is echo yeah most of the hired positions are limited with um, age or professional skills while um, startup are always open for you and wait uh, wait for you that's why i think it's really a good uh, adventure uh, okay so if you really want your project uh, where to start uh, you will need idea uh, and a uh, great idea. What is it and how to find it? Uh, first, I want to make uh, two remarks. First, that uh, quality of idea is not related to your uh, mental abilities or not to some uh, super IT magic uh, IT technology or super secret business model. No, so you don't need to be uh, uh, IT or some technological genius or business genius in order to create, uh, invent a great idea. And the second remark that at the beginning, almost all, all ideas are weak, but uh, if they are not abandoned, um, if you are work uh, on it every day, and um, usually there are a lot of criticism at first stage, if you use it in order to improve your idea, it can become, stronger 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 so the first uh, the first thing uh, to overcome first disappointment and not to abandon your idea and then it can become great uh, ideas are born in our head and uh, like just some desired picture of the future and when uh, someone tells you about his idea it begins to penetrate from his vision into your present and, and I like uh, to make comparison with film. I guess you saw uh, it, The Last Action Hero with Arnold Schwarzenegger, when uh, heroes from a fictional world suddenly leave the screen and come into our, our reality. So the same effect uh, happens with ideas. When, you, uh, when people hear and believe in your idea, uh, um, the more people uh, believe in it, the more real it becomes. So you have to encourage audience and get interested in your vision. Uh, but again, there is a question uh, how to do it. And uh, this time there will be no magic. So you have, uh, you have to start with something simple, very simple you uh, take your super mega global idea and um, just simplify it to the level where you can run it immediately and get the result get some feedback and uh, just just, just to start, get the result even today or, or, or one week or, or one month uh, just just to start with something simple if you remember again IT genius uh, Steve Jobs he started Apple in his garage with absolutely simple uh, activity. He created uh, his computers and, and uh, sold it. Um, he created computers and sold it. And uh, so very, very simple. And again, the same story with uh, Sam Walton's and Walmart Empire. He also started as an absolutely ordinary small hardware store, but um, if you uh, keep your vision in mind, if you save your idea in mind, if you uh, work on it, if you feed it, feed it every day, if you tell it to people, it uh, can become stronger and stronger and uh, stronger. So keep your 
big vision in the head, but start with uh, something very uh, similar. Um, again, best way, how to start, best way uh, is just to improve something uh, what already works. Something works mean that there is a proven demand for it and people really need it. Yeah, uh, and let's take just uh, some example, uh, some absolutely ordinary, even boring, uh, uh, boring thing, uh, absolutely daily uh, thing. Let's take a teacup, for example. How can we improve it? In some meaning, it's absolutely perfect thing and what, what we can improve it. Yeah, but there are some uh, instruments for it. We can change materials, we can remove or add something, combine, transform and change sizes and get another products. Yes, change material. For example, we can make a teacup from glass or from recycled plastic and it will be a new product for a new market. We can remove handle or add two handles and it will be a cap for a baby. We can combine it with uh, materials and with um, special materials and receive thermos or we can close it and receive sport shaker. We can transform it into a bowl for hot drinks, for example. And we can change size like espresso cup or a cup for a beer. And uh, the same story with uh, services. You can also change some procedures in your service and get another uh, product. Uh, you can remove or add some value to your service or some additional uh, services. Combine two services into one. For example, I don't know, a bookstore where you can drink coffee. Yes, <laughs> some combination of cafe and, um, and uh, at the bookstore. You can transform, uh, change uh, target audience or change market um, and uh, again change size. Uh, well, just Disneyland is just a huge uh, sandbox. Yeah. And it also will be a new product. Uh, so uh, next, so first step, yes, to choose the, uh, uh, your method, how to improve something, what is really, what people really need. And then just uh, uh, describe your idea uh, correctly. Uh, what exactly uh, you want to change and why people will pay you. I usually suggest to use such a table. It's rather typical. Um, uh, just answer to yourself uh, what do you want to create for whom what they need uh, what are the obstacles and how they appeared how the problem is solved now and why your decision is better and after that when you will answer all these questions for your own uh, you will need uh, free instruments of course much more but, <laughs> but free main instruments uh, the first one you need to uh, to create a business model and uh, I recommend to use Lean Impact Canvas. Uh, it's rather simple and enough uh, for the first stage, yeah, for, 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 for your start. It will help you to collect uh, all, uh, to collect a puzzle from all key elements like problem, existing alternatives, your competitors, uh, your solution, key metrics, channels, unique value proposition, unfair advantage, customers, and of course, input metrics. Uh, so this is the first one. There are a lot of materials uh, in the internet about it. So that's why I will not dive into details. Uh, the next instrument is high cycle. Again, uh, nobody can predict uh, future. Uh, so in order to, uh, in order to move forward, uh, use hypothesis. You can make an assumption, make an assumption about marketing or sales or whatever. Uh, then you take actions in order to improve or, or to confirm or disprove it. Um, you receive some feedback data and uh, according to this data you making the conclusions insights yes and also we can add uh, the level of trust uh, into this uh, information and the level of complexity uh, so it's uh, making creating your startup it's like moving in a fog when you see only one step ahead and uh, you you need to make one step in order to see another uh, a place for 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 another step but it's absolutely enough in order not to stand still and uh yes you have to see uh, make one step in order to see next one 
Okay. okay. And Maybe just a small interruption, guys. Yeah. Please write your uh, question in questions in the chat yes. if you understand Hadi model or whichever model. So don't be shy. Please uh, write the questions in the chat. Yeah. The third instrument, fear of change. I also um, I'm sure that you know about it. It's absolutely necessary if you want to understand and measure your social or environmental impact. Uh, it helps you to systemize uh, all links uh, between resources, actions, and results. Yes, it's like uh, how your impact is uh, linked, uh, is connected with outcomes, outputs, activities, and what kind of, resource of resources you need in order to, uh, to get this impact. So theory explains the assumption how the change is supposed to happen. It's really a very useful instrument, and I guess also uh, you know about it. And uh, what else? Um, I recommend usually to uh, align, correlate your idea with sustainable development goals. Uh, I'm, so, I'm sure you also know about it. Uh, 17 goals, 169 targets uh, should be reached until 2030 year. And um, um, why to do it? Because uh, first you will be sure that the problem you want to deal with is uh, actual, is important, is real, and you can find a lot of uh, useful statistics and materials describing these uh, problems. The second, if you previously worked in absolutely classical paradigm, it's always time, it's always not too late to add social or environmental impact, and again you can choose uh, some uh, topic from from here and sustainable development goals it's a good uh, platform for networking where you can uh, find partners uh, who are also working on the same uh, problem and you can communicate negotiate and uh, cooperate with each other so is DG is a good reference um, point uh, to focus yeah and the last thing from uh, this block, uh, why 99% of startup fails? Yes, it's absolutely horrible statistics, but, but it's, it's really so. And um, um, well, the, the, the main problem from my point of view, of course, is that uh, to create a product, it's not good enough, it's not good enough because if a specialist, um, if, if um, you are a good specialist, you are able to create some product. And uh, you say, I can make a product, it's a super great, but um, three main reasons why, if you, even if you have a really good product, why your uh, project can fail. Uh, the first reason, because specialist, uh, he thinks mostly about the creation about his product, but not about what the people are ready to pay for. So you create pro usually a great product is simply absolutely not needed to people. For example, you want to, uh, I don't know, improve cup and uh, invent a bulletproof cup from, from, from Kevlar. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we, it's crazy idea. It can be, uh, it's rather cool, but uh, if people are ready to pay for it, I'm not sure. But okay, let's imagine that, that, that they are. So uh, that they want to buy it, but uh, the next problem is that uh, you need to attract a lot of people. You need uh, customer flow, and if there is, if you are not an expert in marketing and sales, there will be no customers, no sales, and no business. So another big uh, block of problem is uh, promotion of your um, of your startup. And uh, even if we, if we, if we imagine that um, you have people who want, who, who still want to buy it, uh, the third reason that uh, business is a system with a lot of interconnected uh, uh, operations and interconnected processes. Uh, you need to deal with HR, legal, finance, distribution, logistics, or again, marketing, email sending, landing pages, <laughs> and another 100 uh, different questions. And really, it's very hard. It's a, it's a very hard daily job. And uh, so creating of great product is just only 50% of uh, success. And 
uh, it's absolutely not enough in order to uh, start your business. So the right formula. Sorry, may I just comment uh, shortly? Yeah. So it's actually some people, some products, I look at them and think, uh, who who is buying it you know so <laughs> <laughs> for 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 some people some products are absolutely not needed for others they are needed and um, the other point is that um, you can create a demand like this iphone i mean 10 years yeah. ago nobody needed it <laughs> yeah, yeah. seem to be like okay people can't live without it uh, yeah, it's, you're uh, absolutely right. Yes, yeah, Steve Jobs firstly invented iPad, uh, made iPad, and after that, people invented why they need this iPad. But I love, uh, I really very like uh, one's his one story. I don't know, remember this the name of this startup, but they were great because they invented sunglasses for dogs. Everybody laughed at them, but uh, <laughs> but no, <it's, laughs> they they. They won uh, some prize on TV, and after that, they they got a lot of demands for these sunglasses. And military uh, gave um, uh, a, a big um, how to say, um, um, a big demand for yes, yes. They want to buy it, a right. huge a huge amount of these sunglasses for dogs in uh, in uh, in Sahara Desert or, or some 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 sort of. This uh, territory. So sometimes, yes, yeah, sometimes you you can be lucky, but <laughs> but mostly it's it's of course exceptional. <laughs> so right formula of startup success. Uh, success means uh, right idea packed um, your great idea packed in uh, right product, customer flow, sales, and right processes. This is how it looks. And uh, just in the end of this theoretical part. Uh, I understand that my speech was rather general and um, brief. Uh, here are some practical guides from my personal library. If you want to start uh, your social startup, I think they can be useful. They devoted to different uh, questions. Uh, if you want to start a social enterprise about uh, social enterprise business strategy, uh, business planning guide, uh, how to attract finance, and you can download them for free and use in order to uh, to create your uh, social project and um, now i want to show some cases of successful social entrepreneurs from different parts of the world and the first one is dc central kitchen this is absolutely my favorite uh, this uh, photo uh, I'm here with Mike and Andy. I met when them, with them in 2016 in Washington. Uh, they're very nice, wonderful guys, uh, very optimistic, very positive and energetic. Uh, Mike, he, he, he had his own uh, cafe, but then he decided to add some impact and uh, be, uh, began to operate this uh, kitchen. It's a... Uh, um, um, it's a big, uh, big kitchen. Uh, it produces lunches for schools and catering uh, in the District of Columbia, and uh, they have absolutely wonderful and very effective uh, program of socialization, social program, because people who work there, they are um, usually it's uh, homeless people, it's people uh, homeless and addicted people, and released uh, who released from prisons, and um, all sort of this kind. And um, they teach them on Master Chefs uh, uh, for 14 weeks. Uh, this program, and during this week, they also work with them. Psychologists work with them, social workers, and uh, yes, the, their results are absolutely amazing. Uh, only six percent of uh, of the staff of the graduates of their program are returned on streets or prisons and 90 94 percent uh, again started to um, to, to earn money and come back to, to the society, pay taxes and uh, all sort of this kind and in the United States there are more than 80 uh, organizations working by this model and here again you can see uh, uh, their link with uh, sustainable development goals they're working on no poverty zero hunger decent work and economic growth and reduced inequalities uh, wonderful startup uh, wonderful uh, this is another question the next one let's move to England and this is stay well service 
uh, also very interesting because this is the model of anti-boarding house. So the main idea is to give an opportunity for old people to live in their own houses as much as possible. Yes, it's uh, stay well and be healthy. In England, there is a huge problem of old uh, people who are living alone in their big uh, private uh, houses. And um, so the idea of, the, of this uh, venture that every morning from this uh, big house, two buses, uh, they collect uh, old people around and bring them to uh, bring them here where they can get all necessary care so they can eat take a bath uh, they can do some medical procedures uh, they can communicate and uh, just to receive all the services they need and after that they are transported again home. So it's like a kindergarten for old people. And uh, interesting fact about this venture that it already exists uh, working for more than 70 years. It's already third generation. <laughs> it's it, it's uh, very uh, demanded in the local community. Everybody knows about it. There are a lot of volunteers. Yeah, wonderful example. Uh, the next one, let's move to Taiwan. I was there in 2018 and uh, new life information service it's absolutely wonderful example of uh, that you can it's never too late to change your directions uh, first they started their activity as an ordinary printing house for people with disabilities but they were not very successful because of uh, low uh, prices, uh, low prices and high competition, and they deci decided radically change the direction. The whole team was trained and began to engage in film making. And now they write scripts for different films, advertising film, documentary films, and um, just different movies. They make sound and impose uh, special effects. And now they're in great demand. They have uh, big salaries. And I was really impressed with uh, this guy in right upper corner. If you can see uh, him, uh, he his body is uh, paralyzed. He can move only with his uh, head, and he is a designer. So he creates visual effects only with his with his mouth, with his brief. As when we can uh, uh, with this special technical equipment. I don't know how it how it is called, but uh, I was exactly really exactly what I wanted to to ask. How does it work? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he, he, he can create with his that. Brief, yeah, but I don't know really how it happens. Yes, but uh, uh, Mrs. Uh, Hugh, this, uh, she's she's little uh, uh, little woman, but at the same time she's absolutely iron lady with iron will. And uh, yeah, she told she told me about this. I, I just I just simply didn't believe it. But yeah, it was it was true. He's painting with his uh, with his breath. So uh, yeah. This is like uh, this. The next one, it's Latvia. Uh, last year I was in Riga uh, in, uh, in Latvia and met Natalia Yermalaeva. Uh, by the way, she has a uh, birthday today and sent her greeting cards. She's absolutely positive, energetic, uh, very smile, shiny, uh, shiny girl. But again, she also has a disability. But what she did, she started with a uh, uh, painting on t-shirts and now she opened this uh, store Baltic space it is called and um, she sells their products of more than 50 uh, social entrepreneurs from Latvia uh, as you can see here it's a clothes, some um, accessories and uh, handicrafts and all sort of this kind so this is a model of uh, social training Another interesting fact from uh, Latvia, uh, they adopted their law on social entrepreneurship only in 2018. <laughs> and uh, last year, there were only 77 social ventures in their federal uh, register, uh, register of social entrepreneurship. So they only just started to promote this, uh, this topic. But you know, they are still great. Okay, now let's move to Russia. And this is the last block of uh, cases. And I want to start with uh, Coca-Bella. 
I think this is the most famous uh, project in Russia, Mali Turish. Uh, this is the name of a small village uh, where one girl, uh, Guzel Sanjapova, uh, together with her family and with her father, organized cream honey production. And they give jobs to all people who live there um, uh, and uh, in, invest almost all profit into this village. She already be, uh, built a playground for kids and has started to develop ecotourism there. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, one or two years ago, she organized a big rock concert in this small village that there are live i guess maybe less than 100 people and they organized rock concert on three or four thousand people just under the open skies in the field it was absolutely a great uh, great experience yes and they're really very popular nowadays she has the contract with lipton she already produces uh, not only cream honey but uh, cosmetics, uh, some handicrafts, and uh, a lot of other uh, things. Yeah, this is this is uh, one of the most popular project. Okay, the next uh, last year I visited Kamchatka, the, another another part of the, of the Russia where, where Russia starts, as they say, it's a wild, far and mysterious land of forests, lakes, and uh, bears. Uh, of course, um, there I found a uh, scientific and uh, educational interactive museum of volcanoes, Volcanarium. It's uh, the only one museum in Russia devoted to volcanoes. Uh, in addition to rock samples and great uh, large photo video materials, um, they also have unique models of lava. They use VR technologies when you uh, just put on yourself glasses and you can dive deep in, under the earth into the volcano lava. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing experience. Uh, um, I was really impressed with their uh, activity and yeah, I've made um, a short video uh, about this voyage on YouTube. We have uh, Galileo Impact Stories. Uh, this is our YouTube channel. There are more than 50, 55 releases uh, with different uh, um, Oh, devoted to different topics of social startups. Also, you can visit and subscribe on our channel and see how it was there in Kamchatka. Absolutely uh, amazing, uh, amazing uh, story. Okay, uh, next one. Uh, Sergey, a question. Yeah. So Kamchatka yeah. is famous uh, with bears on the street, is it right? Did you uh, see yes. Any? Yes, as they say, the population of Kamchatka is about uh, 300 of thousands people and about 25 thousands of them are bears so it's absolute it's it's not a joke it's not a fairy tale that you can meet a uh, meet a bear on the street of kamchatka especially in spring when they woke up and they were hungry yes they sometimes cow, uh, come uh, to the town petropavlovsk kamchatsky uh, they visit city but uh, it, it's not of course it, it, <laughs> it, 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 it's not connected with the whole russia <laughs> it, it happens it's only not in the, moscow right <laughs> yes it's not in moscow <laughs> <laughs> yes, okay, in Moscow, okay. bears are usually use bicycles in order <laughs> to go by streets. <laughs> okay, uh, the next example, Observer Company, uh, it's Roman Aranian from Kaliningrad, another part of Russia. Very <laughs> west from, part of Russia. From, from, yes, from east part to the west part. And he was a military uh, pilot and... Um, he fell down while paragliding, he lost his ability to move, but he didn't give up. And together with his friends and colleagues, uh, he modernized, or he improved, yes, what he did, he improved uh, existing wheelchairs and making them suitable for off-road. So you can see here maybe on the picture uh, that <clears throat> in order to be able to go to the forest or anywhere you want, and now he uh, he also became very popular and famous in Russia, and a lot of people from different parts of the world uh, make um, requests to him for these wheelchairs in order to travel on nature or whatever. And Raman uh, he opened Observer Company, and now he builds a big plant 
in Russia, in Kaliningrad, and creating new jobs for disabled wheelchair users and producing these uh, off-road wheelchairs, uh, electric wheelchairs. The last, um, um, the last project, uh, Kolomna Pastila, or Kolomna Fruit Candy, it's the historical museum and modern production of field fruit candy in uh, by Russian historic recipes. Natalia Nikitina, uh, together with her uh, friend, established Kolomna Museum of Forgotten Flavors in 2009. Uh, they found the recipe of uh, this fruit candy in some archive, so in some library, in archive, and they decided to uh, again, to, to 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 create it, to reburn it, and nowadays it's a big uh, creative cluster called Kolomna Passat, Kolomna Passat, which includes uh, several museum, um, one factory, and uh, cafes, and um, they welcome about uh, fifty thousands of visitors annually. So if you want to visit something in Russia, except Moscow and Saint Petersburg. Kolomna is absolutely a uh, wonderful place where you can uh, where you can come. Okay, this is what I wanted to tell you about uh, different examples of social entrepreneurs. And if you want to know more, I invite you to my page at uh, Medium. Uh, this April, I published there my typology of social entrepreneurs. Uh, it's of course not scientific, absolutely not academic, not scientific. It's just based on my personal experience, um, my observations. Uh, I try to understand uh, what types uh, of people uh, are engaged in social entrepreneurship because I think this is they are really amazing. They, 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 they differ somehow from ordinary people. They, they, they are also different. I, uh, I've mentioned four types. For example, the first one is Savia. <laughs> it's, uh, it's rather predictable. Uh, he's more closer to a non-profit activist. Uh, he prefers, he doesn't believe in words, but trust uh, actions. And uh, but three others uh, are more specific and not so obvious. They're very different from each other. Uh, two criteria: it's uh, personal values and attitudes. Uh, personal values that they are more individually or collectively oriented, and uh, their attitude towards money. And this is how I get these uh, four types. So you can yeah, visit and uh, um, find me there, read these articles, and there are some, art some other texts on social entrepreneurship, and I'll be happy to get your feedback. Okay, well, uh, yeah, I guess that's all from my part. Uh, and now I want to invite Svetlana to join our talk and uh, tell you a little bit about Galileo and our proposals for you. Sure, okay. thanks a lot, Sergey. And uh, before I go to Galileo, uh, I wanted to add uh, that there are so many other projects um, for environment, for action for oceans as well. We have also a few of the projects published on our website um, related to Arctic maps. It's an amazing project. Check that out. We have also IBS, it's a biomass project which helps as well climate action and also production of protein out of plants. There are a lot of vegans out there, so a lot of people, growing population. So there are many other projects out there and uh, which, which are amazing examples. So if you want to start a social startup, it's... Um, I think you can, sometimes you don't even need to reinvent the wheel. You can take one project and apply it in your country or region. So it's not always necessary even to reinvent something. And now, of course, I, I'd like to say a few words about Galileo as uh, we recently updated our face <laughs> and uh, made few improvements. So um, the mission stays the same. So basically we stand for awareness uh, in impact investing. We provide accessible educations, nowadays webinars, but I hope soon we will continue with uh, live events in autumn. Um, and of course, uh, our dream is uh, to 
help as much as possible the community to find each other. This is why we develop our platform Camomile to connect investors with startups and with experts to make the capital flow more efficient into impact investing and also activate human greatest potential. So because uh, as a lot of experts would like to engage for sustainability, for sustainable development goals, do something more meaningful and through the platform, um, it will be possible. Mm -hmm. So, and uh, now it's uh, actually official. You can become a member of Galileo. We have four different um, packages from individual to corporate. And um, the main uh, offer for um, individuals, just go back a little bit, Sergey. Mm -hmm. okay. <laughs> the main offer for individuals is, of course, uh, education. So you will be able to attend our events, um, members only events, or the events for everyone. You get also partnership discounts because Galileo is collaborating with many other organizations. And of course, if you want to be a bit more impactful with your contribution, you also support a uh, continuation of our YouTube channel, Impact Stories, um, and development of Chamomile, which is actually coming very soon out, the next um, version. We plan it uh, in August. So if everything goes smooth, uh, then uh, you will be able to use uh, the platform in August this year. And of course, everyone gets uh, free access to Galileo Library and our newsletter. The corporates, in addition, especially Impact Corporate, they get a private webinar or offline event um, dedicated to impact investing. So I've been uh, teaching uh, many financial organizations on the topic of impact investing. In, if someone is serious or wants at least to know what it is, then we would be providing a private webinar for this organization and put the logo of the company on our website so the company can show that they are actually also aware of ESG impact investing and really mean it to transform. And only for you guys, we'd like to offer a 30% discount uh, if you apply soon. Um, the, the discount will be valid till uh, Sunday for private and for, for one during one week for the corporate membership. You will receive uh, the link in the email, follow up email, and you are very. Uh, this is actually the link will be working for individual. And if you are interested in corporate membership, you just drop us email, please. I'd like to get uh, corporate membership with a discount and we will uh, do this for you. Okay. So special thing what we started to produce is Impact Digest. Impact Digest provides you structured information from impact investing space. Because nowadays there's so, mu so much information out there that uh, even myself, I don't manage to read it all, to get it all. It's simply impossible. So we decided to provide useful information for impact investing uh, community, uh, like uh, jobs, about five last jobs on the market, or uh, useful articles, or um, five startups of the month. So you can subscribe. It's free. Um, use um, this opportunity to just get some structured information from us. Mm -hmm. And next webinar is on 12th of August with amazing expert Timoteos Mavropoulos, <laughs> I got it right, <laughs> which will provide behavioral insights for social startups. So what does it mean? So basically a lot of times uh, investors do not invest in some startups which are really um, from some point of view, great, but there is some behavioral bias. So in order to understand how investors think, how uh, is better to structure your social startup from the behavioral perspective, I truly recommend you to join. It is a free webinar, again, in the similar format, one hour. And um, yeah, the Tim Timoteos is really 
a great expert on this um, topic mm -hmm. and we invite you to join. Yeah, we will also send you a link on how to register on this yeah. uh, webinar. Okay, and, and any I think now we can come to questions from your side. And what I suggest, I mean, we have few questions in the chat, but we can also demute our dear participants for today as you are not so many. And uh, you can just ask the question um, by voice without writing. <laughs> So let me just quickly unmute you guys. Um, okay. So, all right. And then we will start with the first question from Gabriela, who is asking, how do we measure the social impact of a startup in the early stage? when we do not have much data yet. Mm -hmm. So um, I can, I'm happy to answer that. So if you're early stage startup, right? So you usually start with a theory of change which Sergey shortly mentioned. And if you don't have data yet, you at least need to define the basic KPIs. For this, you can also use Iris Plus from Global Impact Investing Network. It's a free tool and uh, select your KPIs according to your SDGs. So for the environment or educational projects, there will be different key performance indicators. So just choose maybe five, maximum 10. Uh, I would suggest five, uh, the ones which suit to your social startup and try to establish um, the process of impact measurement because you don't measure it just once, you measure it during a period of time. So if you measure today, then you measure again in half a year, then in a year, and collect the good data. So this would be uh, advice how to start. Define your theory of change and then apply Iris Plus. And then maybe try to define a couple of unique KPIs which only valid for your social startup because mostly, um, there are no similar one, I mean, no identical one startups. So there will be usually a few KPIs which only are valid for your startup, right? And sometimes they are the most important for investors, which what you need to show. Mm -hmm. Okay, and there is another question. Um, membership discount. Um, ah, yes, so you can contact us uh, on info at iic.ch basically. Yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Question from David. David uh, can you go from private to business membership? Of course you can go from private to business. Why not? We, uh, <laughs> we welcome corporate members <laughs> as uh, we truly appreciate their support. So if you now apply for private membership, perfect. If you decide in half a year, I'd like to transform to corporate, amazing we will adjust the price according to what you already paid and you can get your corporate membership yeah, yeah. If i can explain because um sort of in the field that i'm in or or, or being so i've done quite a lot of um, study on sustainability so i came from um sort of the un sdg um had people approached me about wanting to sort of partner and okay. doing certain things um, and sustainability just becomes so vast <laughs> with different yes. things. Um, and I took some time out and I've been educating myself, etc. And then I was doing on a kind of actually a societal thing during the lockdown. So I was running sort of almost um, like a, um, a one to two hour every day events for people on different subjects, etc. Connecting people around the world. And I seem to have attracted yet more people, <laughs> some people want to partner with me on different things. And I've ended up with some really, um, well, I consider them some giants in sustainability and different people who want to work with me. And so um, initially I came, just to give a bit of background, about a year ago, I was looking at a project in Nottingham in the UK. And so it wants to be, it's one of the cities that wants to be carbon zero um, and connected. Um, and I do some work at the UN for the thematic groups for smart, sustainable cities because I, I think it, it covers 
even though it's SDG 11, it encompasses so many others. And I think it's one of the most complex yeah. problems. And so um, I actually, just this uh, last, well, last few days, I stepped away from that platform because it was taking me two, three hours a day. And I wasn't getting any time to do the work I want to do on sustainability because that's mm -hmm. where I spent my life going, so to speak. So that's why I was asking about private because um, you know, as, as an individual, but I had many people wanting to work on me, and there's discussion about many sort of different projects. You know, my, I can say my, my key thing at the moment is smart, sustainable cities because I see it's just one of the biggest challenges that, that, that there is when you when you mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. think about it. I'm not decrying for things like with the oceans or other things. You know, that they, they all all need uh, a, a attention. So I'm I'm in that sphere. So that, yeah, that's why I really I was asking because um, <laughs> I'm spoiled for choice because of sustainability. But um, I, I'd like to thank Sergio though because I, I was on the, the previous webinar and now I've, I'm starting to get a much more encompassing you know understanding of how to tackle it. You know, especially with metrics, how to measure um, some of the stuff from the UN, etc. Because I can see you can have some great ideas that can have great societal change, but um, you need to be able to present it in a way that gives it enough legs to stand on to start with, if that makes sense. Absolutely, absolutely. And um, so Galileo is actually established for public, you know, via non-profit tax exempted organization and we educated 2000 people last two years. And amazing to see that, um, so we are really trying to establish our educational programs and webinars or offline events in a way that everyone can understand, independently from the background, from uh, where the person has come from, how much money the person has, that the person can engage in one or another way. Because, yeah, yeah it makes completely sense also that what you said, you are more into sustainable cities and it's perfect, you know, because I'm more into environment and SDG is such a great and wide framework. So it's great that people engage for different topics. There is enough work and engagement for everyone. No, 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 absolutely. I mean, I, I think, you know, for me also, because I did some, I do some work with the ITU and I've done the AI for good. And so I've got a, I've got, how can you say, a real sort of broad spectrum of my, my day job. I do looking after the earth via satellite. Mm -hmm. So there's this sort of <laughs> kind of that, that bit as well, but I'm, I'm not far off um, retiring. So th this is what I want to do is sustainability, you know, going through it, you know, what do you want to, what's your mission, vision, purpose in life? And so that's, that's why I'm investing time um, in, into that. And it's great to meet some fantastic people as well. I, I, I love being part of a movement that, that, that's for good. So, yeah, that's kind of my driver, so, so to speak. Great, David. Hope you will join mm -hmm. us. And uh, by the way, also for everyone who is on the line, Galileo is always looking for uh, people who want to engage or support us with their expertise because we are also still quite recent organization and uh, if you want to be our ambassador or volunteer with your expertise we can also always discuss it one-to-one -one. for this just drop us email on info and uh, we can have one-to-one -one chat yeah no, no thank you well, yeah. I, have a, I have a few expertise in little bits that I can contribute, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it's fast. As I say, you know, it's completely, it's completely, um, you know, it's, 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 the subject area, is, you know, is vast. So, mm -hmm. no, that's good. Great. Okay, Any other questions, guys? Or otherwise, we will uh, round this up and uh, see you on the next webinar. And you will send out the, the, the slide deck with you. Yes, so, absolutely. Yeah. Oh, it will be sent you. today. Yes, absolutely. We will yeah. send all links, presentation. Uh, yes, everything you need. Yeah, and we absolutely, I just want to, <laughs> yeah, we're absolutely serious. We, we, we search for different experts who are also interested to promote topic of social entrepreneurship, sustainability, impact investing, SDGs. Yeah, we are always open and we are ready to give our platform and to, to organize your webinar and uh, yeah to, to, to promote well, to help you know, my, my, my dream is you know is, is around the societal change through impact investing 
you know, that, that hits all the SDGs. You know, I want to try and, well, all, you know, I say all of them as most as I can, you know, I want to, I want to go, you know, for, for a grand plan to, you know, to really show, you know, how much you, you know, you can do, um, you know, and especially because um, during the day I, I deal with commodities and food and I understand that's a, it's a really serious topic that people need to understand. And especially as our, our, our um, carbon footprint, how we do it, we need a big rethink on that. Um, I'm not quite sure if I'll quickly pick that one up, but there, you know, there's lots of areas that, that, that um, I can say, need some traction, need some movement. And I'm super excited about it because there's lots of opportunity. <laughs> Absolutely. And we always also engage people to share information about Galileo in your network. So if someone's still not aware about impact investing or... SDGs, whoever, please refer them to our website. There are also plenty of information which they can read or join our next events. No, thank you, thank you. So it's, it's a great help. This is a great help for me, you know, is um, because there's the SDG part there, and then there's you there, and that's kind of making sense of the other part and connecting outwards to others as well. So it's mm -hmm. really good. Okay, great. thank you. Thank you very thank much you. for joining everyone, and uh, we see you. In the next events, wish you all amazing day and enjoy the sun. Summer okay. is there. <laughs> yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.